pleased and proud to have got uh, Comrade Yearly from uh, the Communist Party of Greece uh, speaking here today, speaking about the crisis of the EU and its threat to the peoples of Europe, uh, and in particular the threat it poses to the peoples of Greece and how far we also can draw lessons from it. We should say that uh, when the crisis, the financial crisis, broke in 2008, a crisis of monopoly capitalism, it was, I think, the Greeks who first raised up the flag of revolt when they went up to the Acropolis and draped the flag, peoples of Europe, rise up. And that became iconic, not just for Greece, but for people across Europe in their struggle against an attempt to use that crisis of monopoly capitalism in order to impose a rule of capital that was far more ruthless and damaging than anything that had been seen before for two generations in terms of destroying the bargaining rights of working people and also attacking the basis of security of the welfare state. And of course, Greece has been at the front line of this. So, Comrade Ioli is going to talk about the current crisis, which is very fierce, very difficult, politically fraught in Greece. Uh, and then we'll have about 45 minutes, I hope, for um, questions at the end of that. Um, dear comrades and friends, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for the invitation. Um, the KK is making a, a significant effort to keep uh, the workers not only of our country but um, uh, also for various reasons, let's say, for them that are abroad. Um, uh, and of course the communists here and the friends in Britain and inform them about the development in Greece and um, uh, about its positions, about KK's positions and line, political line. Uh, the conditions under which Greek people live today are more or less known. Uh, the high rates of unemployment and poverty, the flexible employment, the expensive health system, etc. For all these, there is only one to blame, of course, and we all know, capitalism. Um, and this is exactly what they want to hide today. They hide it because they want to claim that another political management that will still support the monopolies can be the solution for the people. Even in that cause, however, they do it by shouldering the weights of the capitalist recovery to the people, just like they did with the weights of the crisis. Syriza, for example, took advantage of the indignation of our people towards the policy that was exercised by um, uh, against him during the crisis. However, at the same time, Syriza was welcomed by the Hellenic Federation of Enterprises, by big hotel owners or by big industrialists. In our assessment today, the replacement of uh, Nuvu Pasok, who was the coalition government before that, uh, by the Syriza NEL, which is the today's one, uh, it's definitely an anti-people's government. And this is because the new government, like the previous one, despite its left-wing uh, sloggering, operates within the same framework, which is the country's participation in the EU and the NATO, the implementation of the commitments to these imperialist unions, the recognition of the unbearable state debt that the people are not responsible for, the support for the profitability of the capitalist interests in the name of the competitiveness of the national economy. The government of Syriza Anel carries on the anti-people's measures of the previous governments, like, for example, the taxes on the property, the increase of the taxation in general, the opening of shops on Sunday holiday, uh, the keeping of the legal fr framework for employment uh, with no rights, the privatizations, even if they claim that it's not uh, 61 as it used to be, but it's 50, 57 or something. Uh, clearly, the coalition government has showed in its um, true intentions from the very early start. They took over the assets of pension funds in order to pay the lenders, willing to participate to imperialist wars in the area of the Middle East under the reactionary pre-contest to safeguard the rights of Christian population of the region. 
The new Greek government continues its talks with the foreign lender, lenders, which is uh, basically EU, the uh, Central Bank and IMF, the well-known Troika, which has now been labeled the three institutions. The new government's program is simply seeking to manage the phenomena of extreme poverty, while at the same time the unbearable situation will continue for the majority of the people, as the causes of the people's problem will still remain in place. It does absolutely nothing about the average wage that has been reduced by 25% in recent years. The enormous tax increases, direct and indirect, which the workers are already paying for, about the serious wage and pension reductions, about the increase of living costs. The, specifically, just to say uh, an example, the living standards of the popular strata fell almost 50% during this, the crisis period. Of course, on the other hand, the big shareholders of the monopoly groups with, one, um, with 140 billion euros abroad continue to remain outside the firing line. The ship owners continue to pay minimal taxes. The big industrialists, in the name of the reinforcement of the national economy's competitiveness, are waiting for new subsi subsidies for, from the Syrianel government. The well-known government's negotiations that are still happening is related to how the domestic ruling class will be financed. The reduction of the primary surplus, which is at the center of the discussions, will be translated into new subsidies for capital, which will be labeled using terms like productivity reconstruction. So, however the negotiation of citizen L government with the lenders develops, the program and the forthcoming new agreement will not lead to the recovery of the enormous losses the popular strata underwent in recent years. The, their patrioti patriotism, as they call it, is once again the strengthening of the ruling class in its war against the others. KKE's initiative to table the draft law to abolish all the anti-people agreements and laws that were passed on the basis of these agreements over 300 application laws, supports the struggle of the workers and people to tear up the entire anti-worker, anti-people framework that has been left untouched uh, by the Syriza and coalition government, and also to fight to recover everything they lost in the crisis. Of course, this uh, draft law was never uh, came to the parliament, even just as a discussion. Uh, some say, uh, that although KK may be right about the nature of the negotiations, however, wouldn't be possible to have a positive outcome for the people. Uh, if, for example, uh, there are investments and profits uh, for the capital. And yet, the maximum that the working class could expect comes from the program of the Saloniki. The pre-election, which are basically the pre-election statements and the agreement with the Eurogroup. So what can we truly expect from a best possible deal, if they can have? The answer is peanuts. And why? The two billions that they have already fallen to 200 million right now uh, is, is one thing. But nevertheless, even if we got the two billions that was initially stated, what we would essentially be talking about is measures of managing the extreme poverty with meal vouchers per person of two euros per day, with free electricity for families of four who will then have to choose whether to use it to make food or have a bath, uh, or to get warm. Uh, and even if we took uh, the whole thing a little bit further, what is important to notice is that money doesn't come out of nowhere. So even if we go, if we get the two billion, uh, who is going to pay for all of this? It's either the capital or the people, that's clear. Um, so needless to say that for the capital, there is no provision for further taxing. And then again, how could the government of the bourgeoisie take action against its own class? So again, the working class and the poor people will be the ones to pay the bill. Some people say that Syriza is a left party. Couldn't you work together? Couldn't you help them? No, because Syriza and KKE are totally um, different. They are following different completely paths. In a few words, Syriza is the new pole of social democracy in Greece, and its interest uh, is in managing bourgeoisie power with a left-wing visage. 
The KK is a party of the working class that seeks the overthrow of capitalist barbarity and the construction of another socialist communist uh, society. Life has demonstrated that crudely assembled coalitions of parties in the name of the left and intentions to better manage capitalism do not serve the workers. The experience in Greece and internationally demonstrates that center-left, progressive, left-wing governments in the framework of capitalism, like for example Italy, France, Cyprus even, Brazil, etc., also took anti-people measures, were not able to avoid the consequences of the capitalist crisis, and actively participated in imperialist wars. Such governments exacer um, exacerbated the disillusionment amongst the workers, weakened the labor movement, and in each case constituted a bridge to more anti-people policies. The sister party of Syriza and member of the pro-EU uh, European Left Party, which is here in Britain, uh, the left unity, goes as far to accuse KKE for um, Syriza formulating with the Nationalist Party ANEL. Our party, in a very timely manner, had excluded the possibility of participating in or supporting a left-wing government of Syriza, which promises that there can be a pro-people management inside the framework of capitalism. Just as capitalism, the international imperialist system, system can never get rid of its integral characteristics and can be humanized, as they say, with another allegedly left form of management. So its international capitalist alliances, the imperialist organizations like the EU, cannot be humanized. Indeed, in current conditions, they will become even worse. The EU and NATO are just tools of the EU and US monopolies. Several years have passed since the establishment of the EU and there is enough experience so that we are not trapped in a false dilemma if EU can be more people friendly. Because the basic issue is for whose interest was this interstate union of capital created. It was created to help the capitalists exploit the workers more effectively in the member states. It was created to provide them with the ability to buttress their power, having the support of the bourgeoisie classes of other countries for, for the Union as well. It was created to help the European monopolies in the fierce confrontation with the monopolies of other countries and regional unions. The EU does not violate its founding principles and goals, as Syriza claims. From 1957 until today, and as long as the EU exists, whether it is split into a union of the South or of the North, whether it becomes a federation or a confederation, or um, it will always be a, an imperialist union, aimed against the peoples and the youth. It does not change because the exploitation of men by men is contained in its DNA, as well as class exploitation and the basic contradiction of capitalist society. It is an illusion today, as well, after so much experience, to think that the departure from the euro or the disengagement on its own can become a rung on the ladder for a radical change in the situation without other preconditions, without the most important thing, the struggle for the instruments of development of the economy to pass into the hands of the working class, the people with their own power. The Europe of socialism, peace and social justice for which we are struggling objectively requires the strengthening of the workers' people struggle at the country's level. This is because the strengthening of the struggle at the country's level is a precondition for the empowerment of the struggle at the regional and European level, for the change of the correlation of forces in order to break the link in the chain of the power of the monopolies and the imperialist cycles of the EU and NATO, through disengagement from them, something which in today's conditions can only be guaranteed by workers' people's power. At the same time, we are struggling for the formation of the People's Alliance, which will unite the working class, the urban and rural, rural petty bourgeoisie strata in an anti-monopoly, anti-capitalist direction and in conditions of a revolutionary situation will be transformed into a revolutionary workers' people's front that will undertake the construction of the new society. Today, all the proposals of social democracy and opportunism 
put forward as magical solutions for a way out of the crisis, like euro bonds, financial transactions tax, nationalization of some banks, etc., are adopted by the front of the EU, the bourgeoisie governments of the member states, with a center-left or a center-right orientation, doesn't matter, by parties of capital and sections of the monopolies. As long as monopoly capital and its power are dominant, all the formulas of bourgeois, uh, bourgeoisie management become a bulldozer that sweeps away the lives and the rights of the working people are a lifeline for the profits of the plutocracy and the position of EU capital. Whatever form of management is imposed, whether the fiscal adjustment or the so-called expansive management that opens it up or more money to the monopoly groups. It's uh, worth to mention that um, because we are approaching the 70th anniversary of the people's victory over fascism, uh, to call on the working people, the pensioners and uh, um, everyone in Greece and here to decisively condemn and isolate uh, Nazi and criminal Golden Dawn. It is a vehicle of the reactionary theory known as National Socialism, which is a mixture of ideas and slogans of utopian petty bourgeoisie socialism with nationalism. It follows the examples of Hitler, the fascist regimes that butchered the people and humanity, the security battalions, the collaborators with the occupation forces, the dictatorships of 1967-1974 in Greece. It promotes crude anti-communism and hatred against the labor and people's movement. It organizes and carries out criminal <coughs> acts against it. It has connections with sections of the state apparatus and especially the forces of repression and with criminal networks. It is directly supported by sections of capital. The emergence of Golden Dawn and the rise of its influence in Greece occurred in conditions of a deep and protracted capitalist economic crisis, with a rapid reduction of the influence of the parties that have served for, decade, for decades as pillars of the bourgeoisie political system in a period where the movement has not regrouped its forces in an anti-capitalist and monopoly direction. Golden Dawn also utilized the vague anti-memorandum rhetoric that was also used by the left-wing Syriza, concealing uh, the real causes of the crisis and the ferocious attack against the people's rights, the role of the EU, etc., in order to gain support and an audience of, for its fascist demagogy. It utilized the well-known slogans about the kleptocracy, law and sharks, um, thieving politicians, um, and in addition it was accommodated and covered by various activities that were permitted by the reactionary and disorienting slogan, uh, slogan like parties out, trade unions out, um, is also being reinforced by the anti-communism and the hatred which is fostered by the system towards the workers' and people's struggles. It was benefited by the promotion of the reactionary theory of the two extremes, uh, by the demagogy and the racist ideological uh, constructs of the bourgeoisie party regarding the issue of immigration, which is a product of the imperialist wars and intervention. Uh, of the uneven development and the internationalization of the capitalist market. It is fed mostly by the decay of the bourgeoisie system, by the EU guidelines which equate fascism with communism and demand measures be taken against extremism and radicalism. You can see, for example, what is happening in Ukraine. Uh, the people and the movement should not, should not of course, uh, be um, complacent despite the arrests and the trials in relation to the murderous attacks, both of the leading cadres of Golden Dawn and of those cadres who actually implement the decisions. No one should forget that Golden Dawn was provocatively, sorry, provocatively promoted and um, uh, prettified by a large section of the mass media and that there are attempts to utilize it in the various plans for the reformation of the political system. The coalition uh, government also bears great responsibilities uh, because they are fostering an attitude of tolerance uh, towards uh, Golden Dawn, utilizing various parliamentary procedures, procedures as a pretext. Um, at the same time, 
just to go back to the crisis, this this was mostly because the 17th anniversary comes uh, on uh, Saturday, this Saturday. Uh, however, even in Britain, which is not in the Eurozone, which has no memorandum, no, no Euro, but a national uh, currency, we witnessed the same anti-worker policies from the current coalition government and the previous Labour administration. In Britain, the Ministry of Finance announced a new round of cuts in the public sector services, salaries, pension and social benefits by 30 billion by 2018 a plan that will bring the public expenditures back basically to 1930s levels. In the meantime, more than 100,000 poor children in Britain starved in 2014 due to the government's decision to stop, of course, or cut back their parents' uh, welfare benefits. And the situation is about to get worse as well in the health sector, where even the bourgeois press admits that there is already no free health and very soon the patients will have to pay to see a doctor while the waiting lists at the same time are constantly being increased. Uh, Britain is apparently in the phase of this academic rec um, anemic sorry, recovery from the crisis. We can see that not only the living standards of the working classes are still falling, not only losses of the crisis period do not seem to get recovered soon, but on the contrary, new measures are taken to shield the profitability of capital. For example, tax exemptions increase only by 20 cents of the minimum hourly rate, etc. Therefore, in Britain, we see that the directions uh, that formed, followed do not differ from, uh, do not differ from uh, the rest of, that, of the Europe. And thus, it is no surprise the appearance or support of proposals in the logic of Syriza, either by parties like, for example, uh, Labour Party has a platform, the left platform, which has created um, some kind of a small, uh, let's say, like a um, committee that is, uh, is called Syriza 13, because there are 13 people, um, or movements and unions. For example, the TUC support to the Greek government and its call to all unions in Britain to defend Syriza programs for real structural reforms to tackle the power of the oligarchy, uh, which cannot be accidental. A similar example is the increasingly demonstration of the left unity. Uh, of, of, I think you know that left unity is the main carrier of uh, Syriza's positions in Britain. It uses basically any space, forces to, the, to discuss even events. Um, what they clearly state is their pro, uh, purpose to create a new unified party of the left in Britain, exactly like Syriza. And especially as the elections are approaching in four days, um, we will hear uh, several other uh, misleading statements. Uh, a similar example uh, is as well some, um, the People's Assembly, whose manifesto puts a strong case for an alternative uh, to austerity, with the slogan, Britain of the people, not for the bankers, which also, um, uh, this is a very close to a series of explanation um, of the crisis, of the reason of the crisis. Regarding the recent developments in Greece and the May elections, uh, we can say that two directions have been formed based on the different sides of the bourgeoisie, including the media, to defend their interests, basically. So on one hand, you have a policy like Syriza, uh, which is absolutely needed, and on the other, uh, Greece will have to comply because otherwise an exit from the EU is possible. So states of the EU, um, there are, um, let's say, there are several conditions. Uh, the conservation, for example, of a cheap labor force, uh, the increase of the exploitation, um, or the containment of government social spending policy. Even the measures that uh, are taken against, against um, uh, for example, extreme poverty, uh, it's highly uh, unlikely to be insured in the expense of the capital. Uh, instead, we can see that, again, uh, it will be charged on the employees and the self-employed. We see that the main issue before even the election um, is which party will be the best manager, 
which party will make the reforms needed to increase the profits of monopoly groups while causing the less reactions possible and achieving the best possible social consensus. That's what it seems that they are after here. But this leads to the illusionary uh, concept of a possible peaceful coexistence of the two classes. It conceals the fact that there is no single Britain, but one Britain of the bourgeoisie and another Britain of the working class and the popular strata. They seek thus for a government that recognizes the sovereignty of monopoly groups, no matter how many left adjectives they must use, no matter how far they have to adjust their propaganda to fulfill the wishes of the popular forces. Their actions will be dominated by the capitalist profit, which is in total contrast with the working people's needs, because this profit is nourished by the deprivation of people's needs and not by their satisfaction. In this context, the great majority of the unions has compromised and they only negotiate in terms of class cooperation. Thus, the workers here, immigrants and locals, should not expect the union's action in order to change their lives. The workers must make the step for themselves and take action by forming cores of fire in their workplaces and neighborhoods, like, for example, action committees. We are aware that either in Britain or in Greece or in, in any other country in the EU, even if a possible growth economy gets stabilized, it will not be accompanied by a substantial recovery of the large losses of the working classes that occurred during the crisis period. In order to ensure the competitiveness of the monopoly groups and the related obligations of all the members. Um, over these years, uh, KKE has been constant, uh, consistently in, uh, acting with other communist and workers party with forces that oppose the EU and the offensive of capital in, in Europe. Specifically, uh, back in 2013, we created the initiative of Communist and Workers Party uh, um, as part of the uh, Euro Parliament uh, in order to study and elaborate uh, European issues and coordinate their activity. Uh, the only truly proud choice of the people is to organize the counter-attack against their opponent class, the bourgeoisie and its imperialist alliances. They must create the conditions for the overthrow of the power of the monopolies. In these terms, the struggle within the labor movement must be intensified. Starting point can be the demand of the recovery of the losses. For example, on the issue of privatization, we should not limit ourselves in just requesting a drastic reduction of domestic tariffs and generally a relief of the popular, uh, popular um, household. We must go further and demand the, re the, the repeal of the legislation of any form of privatization, while highlighting the potential of meeting the people's needs through people's power. We have the experience um, the, that the will and the strategy uh, to succeed. For instance, for example, we know that in Greece there are resources. Uh, for example, agricultural production, uh, we are rich in mineral resources, metal, oil stocks, etc. So there are the economic forces and technical and scientific skilled workers available, proving that it is indeed achievable for Greece to meet its ever-expanding needs. The only real class conflict is between the working class, the people on one hand and the monopolies, business groups and business groups on the other. This class struggle is not being held in the councils and the EU institutions. It is being held daily in each EU country, big or small, in every workplace. A different strategy does exist and is the one that serves the labor, the people's interests, in opposition with those of the capital. It is the strategy of rupture with the EU, the capitalist path of development and the power of the capital. It is the path towards a people's power, a people's economy, towards socialism, communism. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think that's given us the basis of a lot of discussion on all of the different fronts. So who's going to come in first for a, a question? Yes. Uh, now that you know Syriza has proved itself as a left left wing party and pro people party, so I'm wondering what what is the general reaction among the people of Greece? Do do you feel like they might start leaning 
towards like uh, right right wing parties and actually be pro capitalist or strongly nationalist after what what's happening? You know, do you feel like there is this sense among the population because they feel disappointed? How exactly, how disillusioned they mm -hmm. are with, with the promise because they might not understand what's actually happening. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to take two or three questions? Yeah, and, sure. Uh, who's going to John, talk? Yeah, Ray. Quick question, yes. just for clarity. Um, the speaker mentioned Greek exit from the European Union. Mm -hmm. Or does he really mean to say for the Eurozone? Which is it? The, the question is whether it's from the EU the itself the or just from the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's a question of clarification. And uh, Zoe? Uh, what kind of relationship does Syriza have with the trade union movement? That's a good three to start with. One yeah, simple. Um, just not to forget. <laughs> I'm writing them down. Um, Maybe we could also hear a, a brief description of the links that Pam's got the fight back in Greece. Spain? PAME, the Trade Union Federation. Um, okay, so regarding the, the first question, um, well, back in 2009, when we started the, when the crisis basically hit Greece, because it was delayed a year back there, um, to us here it hit in 2011, um, as a party, we we clearly mentioned that um, uh, when the times get uh, uh, tough, so when you have an economic crisis and basically you have the deterioration of people's lives, that doesn't always mean that people will actually um, uh, react on, okay, we have nothing to lose, let's fight. Sometimes they go through the opposite. They feel scared, they feel te terrorized, they go to, the, to a more selfish solution, like now I need to take care of myself, I need to do whatever I can uh, in order to protect me. Uh, that is why uh, sometimes um, we see, for example, in Greece, and not only in Greece, actually across the EU, uh, after the first couple of years of the financial crisis, we had a lot of parties, um, especially from the right wing, uh, gain more votes or more um, um, uh, people. Um, in Greece at the moment, um, uh, it's not that people feel disappointed. Um, they feel like um, they don't have... Um, uh, they don't have much to lose at the same time, but at, at the other, on the other hand, um, there is still a hope. So um, the only thing, okay, uh, for example, uh, Syriza, okay, it says what, 2 billion, fine. Even if 200 happens, even if one law passes, which is in favor of the people, we are still going to vote for them. Uh, at the same time, all this all this time, what is on now almost three months of the new government, they see w what the true colors are. Um, however, they're still hoping that, yeah, but you can see they are negotiating. You can see that um, Merkel doesn't like them. You can see that, so there must be something there going on. They still have that um, hope that something will change uh, uh, for better for their lives, although everything that passes through Parliament, um, all the all everyday activities uh, of the coalition government is actually opposing uh, that direction, especially nowadays. In order to pay the last um, uh, dose of the of the debt, uh, they took money from pension funds, from health. Uh, it's very uh, sad to say that even the, um, I don't know how you call the organization here, that is, um, that is responsible for um, uh, paying out uh, uh, for the unemployment uh, benefits and stuff like social that, security. the social security, let's say, 
uh, that pays all the unemployment benefits, uh, but only for that. They gave out 200 million in order to support this uh, fu funding. And, it's, uh, and we are talking about actually that one in 10 gets that benefit in Greece. Is a very, and still it's a very um, small amount they get. And, and you can see that they are passing it to the capitalists. I mean, um, so yes, at the same time you have cases where um, Golden Dawn or more right-wing um, uh, policies uh, are um, uh, benefited. And that's because, um, uh, for example, you see a lot of um, uh, immigrants coming nowadays because of the situation in the Middle East. And uh, we shouldn't fool ourselves, this will get worse um, uh, in the days to come. Uh, because obviously when you have created like a triangle of um, war situation, like you have the uh, Ukraine, you have uh, Egypt, you have uh, the whole uh, Middle East and uh, North Africa. So uh, all of this will create all these refugees. And when you have uh, laws like uh, the, the Dublin one uh, uh, or Sagan Treaty, where you cannot allow them to pass to the country they have maybe relatives or friends there or whatever, and they need to stay in the first country that they come, uh, that they come to, it obviously creates a mentality to the people that live in that country, like why do they come here? Do they want to get us? Um, uh, do they want to get their our jobs or stuff like that? Um, especially when the situation is getting worse for the people in in that country uh, from a finance point of view, and that's when the right um, political lines are trying to get. Uh, advantage of such cases um, but I um, I cannot say that there is a disappointment uh, from the people it's more that they still have an, um, a hope that something will change for the best uh, in Greece and um, but at the same time they still um, and that's what we're trying to change uh, as a party um, uh, that another uh, management, another government, another um, prime minister will help that situation get better. Uh, so they cannot see that it's them that need to do something and not uh, another political party. Um, regarding the exit of the EU, uh, well, f first of all, even from a... Um, European policy, there is no, you, a country cannot uh, be um, exited, if you can say that, uh, from uh, Eurozone. Um, and this, to be honest with you, there is, n there is actually one law that says uh, specifically um, how a party can be, um, uh, um, uh, can be financially wrecked, but in a controlled way. If if, if there is a, so, like for example, there are uh, there is a law that says that um, uh, how you can manage in case of a country that cannot uh, pay the debt or they cannot uh, uh, reach at the level they should be. So there is no exit for them, but there is a, a, a way of managing them, like how you can deal with the issue, but without shooting them out. Um, and there might be cases, to be honest with you, comrades, there might be cases like saying, um, OK, you can have uh, for a specific couple of years until you reach at a specific level um, another kind of currency. Yes, they can do that, two euros, la let's say. Or they can say, okay, you return back to Drachma for one year, then you come back. They can, but these are just management policies. Um, and bear in mind, <laughs> Greece is only like what? 2%, uh, 3% of the EU's um, uh, income. What about Italy that is at the same almost situation? What about France? So I don't think it's... Uh, 
uh, Greece that they are scared of what is going to happen. But Greece is like the guinea pig. Whatever they decided to treat or whatever they decided um, what solution to impose is going to be used the same, in the same kind of way for the rest of the countries. And um, that will be in a similar situation. So I don't think that uh, it does matter if the exit is going to be from the EU or the Eurozone, if it's going to happen or not, because honestly the people don't, shouldn't care about it. For the people, as long as it's capitalism stays the same, cap actually capitalism is capitalism, um, even if it's outside the EU, we are still going to have a capitalism if Greece remains as it is if it doesn't change the, the political line, if it doesn't change the, um, the strategy, if it's not pro-peoples, if it's not socialism, basically, the economy. Um, so the, the relations... Um, uh, so there are quite a few trade unions in Greece that... Um, uh, as we call them, they are um, um, both, in a way. Um, um, and you can say that uh, they are pro-employers. Um, uh, in many of them, yes, Syriza has the, um, uh, let's say, the upper hand. Uh, however, these are very... Uh, they are either unions that are not participating actively. Um, and you can see that, in, for example, in marches or in demonstrations. Um, and there are, of course, unions where Syriza might not own them, but at the same time participating uh, with other forces, like uh, it used to be PASOK, which was the social democracy before, um, or... Um, other left-wing uh, um, uh, movements. Um, but in, in most of the cases, for example, I can give you an example that comes in my mind. Um, there is a big um, uh, chain in Greece, uh, like a supermarket like Sainsbury's, uh, that very recently, uh, I believe in January, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the trade, the union of that big uh, uh, chain uh, was, uh, let's say, the majority of them was uh, Syriza. And they made the negotiation with the employer to cut the salaries of the workers. Because, because the time is rough and uh, do you want to fire them? No, so you cut the salaries. In order for actually, you need not to have neither the one or the other. You need to fight, you need to stay as you are, you don't need to sacrifice your salaries for the profit of the chain. Um, so that's more or less uh, how it is today. But at the same time, uh, yes, the PAMES uh, um, uh, profile or uh, popularity is, uh, is rising. And you can see that even on the May's uh, march, uh, which was great, um, uh, and the whole um, uh, uh, rhythm and the um, passion that there was, and uh, because obviously people see more and more and realize that things are being taken away from them, even when they have almost nothing um, left. Um, so we're trying to 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 put uh, a more um, class-oriented. Um, line in the movement. So PAME helps on that way. Okay, that's three concise answers. Um, who's going to come next on all three questions? Yeah. Um, with the collapse of uh, PASOK and the corrupt you know, attempt at social democracy where people could see that they were delivering uh, neoliberalism and austerity, um, why do you think that Syriza were the ones to benefit from that political vacuum rather than the KKE? Mm -hmm. That's one question. Who's next? Yeah, yeah. back again. This is really interesting. So, uh, is there a confrontation between foreign foreign capital and and Greek capital? I mean, we all know what Syriza is really, but I mean, does 
is the, do, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, does it affect foreign capitalists? Do they affect the decisions that are made exactly, in the case? Yeah. Or is it just uh, just as it was yeah. before? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's question number two. Yep, Simon. If the <coughs> excuse me, if the Syriza project, for want of a better description, does finally collapse altogether, do you do you see there being a sort of an overt threat from the threat from the far right? Um, if the you know they say that nature abhors a vacuum and politics even more so, and that fascism is the the result of of a revolutionary situation, a near revolution, revolutionary situation that doesn't go forward to, to revolution. If the crisis is, is not the end of the day resolved on terms that are satisfactory to the working class and its allies, and they're all mass organisations and political parties, it will be resolved on capital's terms. And so given the degree of hope and, and optimism that was invested in, in Syriza, if this project fails, um, what do you see as being the, the outcome? Do you foresee a sort of a, a move towards a sort of a, an orientation of the, the class and its organisations much more definitively towards the, the KKE? Or can you foresee a circumstance in which the overt right, the far right, the fascist right will, will, will um, make a move? Because it seems to me that there are there's a, a real danger in this situation that disillusion with social democracy um, is not necessarily going to be expressed in support for, for the revolutionary left, not necessarily the KKE, and how is the KKE poised to meet such a challenge? Okay, um, I think that question overlaps a little bit with the first one yeah. we had last time, but um, it's worth exploring. Mm -hmm. So, three more questions. Um, so, I'll, I'll try to answer the last one with the first one. I think it's quite close. Um, um, so, obviously, <laughs> we say that social democracy falling it actually didn't fall. Um, uh, everything has its own place in the political system, in a way. So you always need uh, some kind of uh, right-wing uh, place. You always, uh, the system will always need some kind of uh, opportunist um, uh, party um, in order to absorb uh, people's uh, indignation. Uh, and you always have some kind of a left, central, uh, where it's more light for the people in a way. Um, social democracy didn't fall with the PASOK. Basically what happened was that um, they served what they had to do. Uh, they served the system as best they could. Uh, they did that coalition government and this had the political cost because um, uh, people saw that actually uh, they were at the same, um, uh, at the same um, uh, side with um, a new democracy, which is a right-wing party. And uh, however, at the same time, uh, we were saying, and other forces were saying, like Syriza, actually Syriza was saying that um, uh, the two parties um, um, uh, uh, how you call it when you have only two parties in the system uh, two party system two, okay <laughs> two parties okay um, uh, it's falling now more parties will have a chance to speak and uh, it's going to be more plural etc etc because in the past we used to have either New Democracy or PASOK in the government, so it was either one or the other. Um, uh, however, if you see from the elections, um, a lot of people from PASOK, especially, and we're not talking about just the base, like the supporters or the voters, we're talking about like um, uh, members of PASOK, like um, 
uh, senior members. Um, uh, they transferred, honestly, they just transferred like committees like that to that specifically, to Syriza. Um, apart from other forces. Uh, did they suddenly change? Did they realize suddenly that they're not social democrats anymore? Um, no, it's not like that, uh, comrades. It's, um, basically, uh, Syriza, uh, as I've mentioned in the beginning, they tried to take advantage of all this indignation of the people. They, they tried to take advantage of the situation and uh, by uh, suggesting, by proposing another way of managing the system, another way of managing the crisis in uh, pro-peoples in a way benefit, uh, they uh, took over more, more votes, more people. However, just to mention, um, because it's easy to say, but yeah, but why KK, as you've mentioned, didn't take that place? Um, it's not easy, and we can, know, we can see that from other governments, for people to realize um, what the real cause is, uh, and it's not a simple, uh, a different management uh, that is to blame. Uh, it's not easy to say, um, and it's not easy, of course, to act upon it, uh, when somebody say, when somebody says to you that you need to act on that, you cannot just say it doesn't work. But I'm staying at my place and I'm not going to the demonstration. I'm not uh, going down on a strike, etc. Uh, and especially when there are years now, uh, a lot of um, uh, beliefs uh, uh, stabilizing uh, that. Uh, uh, are more are, are talking more and more about um, uh, let someone else solving you the problem and this is what Syriza was promoting from back in 2012 actually let me solve you the problem let me give you the solution don't do anything just sit at your couch and we will solve everything you cannot do that um, and but this was very appealing to the people and they were used, uh, to be honest with you, in this kind of way of solving um, uh, situation. However, at the same time, since, let's say, the um, increase of um, Syriza in the percentages, uh, so from 2012 and onwards, we could, we, you would expect that if it's a left party to cover so many votes, so many supporters, you would have the same reaction in the movement, right? You would have more marches, you would have more demonstration, more strikes, something. But it was quite the opposite. You had less and less, you had less reaction. There was like, um, uh, like a numb in the, in the movement. And, and this is where our place um, and our um, uh, part was very important. Uh, we tried actually to to uh, awakening the people that um, uh, and try to uh, make them realize that even with a series of government this won't change and this is why from the first um, even before actually the result of the elections we were saying it won't change anything and many people were saying to us but ah oh, come on you wait and see give them a few days you don't need to you know how they work you knew them in the trade union movement you knew that for example in a lot of municipalities they were working together with PASOK or new democracy uh, you knew for example that it's a, it's a very good um, i like it because uh, it shows how uh, classes united uh, bourgeoisie classes united when they feel threatened that there is a municipality uh, in an island, the Caria, uh, which all the parties were um, were formed an alliance against the KKE's um, candidate. It was very interesting to see everything. Even even Golden Dawn was on that alliance. Uh, so you can see that um, uh, it actually created. Um, uh, created a, a space uh, for a series that took over from PASOK, basically. So yes, Syriza, you can say is the new is the new social democratic pole in Greece. Uh, so the question I think is more like 
who is the new opportunist force? <laughs> who is going to cover that place? Um, well, there are a few uh, parties that they are um, uh, ambitious to take over, and uh, and they made an effort with the elections uh, in January, uh, like for example, uh, Adarcia or um, Plan B. Um, and of course, there is always the left platform of um, uh, of Syriza, which sounds very funny because the left party has a left platform. Uh, so anyway, um, so um, so there there might always be people there going forming another party. Uh, we don't know, to be honest with you. The system. The political system in Greece is very fluid at the moment. Nothing is um, completely stabilized. You cannot say that how the things are will stay the same. Actually, they are changing constantly uh, because the the the, um, um, the whole uh, uh, events and uh, what is happening is changing, and uh, they need somehow to try to absorb all these. Um, uh, opposition of the people, or indignation, or um, disappointment. Um, now, um, regarding the the foreign versus the local one capital, um, well, we are in a capitalist system, and uh, because we are at that stage of capitalism, imperialism, actually, to talk into an economic words. Um, uh, there is no, uh, let's say, isolated capital. Uh, all we are at that stage where uh, basically you have um, um, you have let um, how you can oh I don't remember the name of that. Uh, you have uh, several um, um, investments of different capitals, of different countries, in different countries, in different capitals. That's how the system now now works. So yes, there are obviously benefits and interests of foreign capital. You can see that um, in every situation. Last, last days, uh, it's been um, a very uh, popular, the uh, whole situation with uh, Piraeus Sport. And uh, there is a co contest in there, um, and uh, it seems that Costco is going to get that, which is uh, Chinese capital. Uh, at the same time, you have uh, the big um, uh, the, the gas um, um, line that you want to that Russia wants to pass from Turkey and Greece which uh, the part in uh, Greece, it seems that will be given to Gazprom, but at the same time is not sure because America doesn't want that to happen. And, the specific, and specifically when you have Greece, which is uh, at a very strategic point um, uh, geographically, uh, everybody wants to have like a peace or wants to influence the situation uh, with the GN especially. And you see that uh, the government um, doesn't let that go. Uh, so, for example, recently they did um, a, a, during a NATO exercise, um, they, they formed some kind of a, um, alliance with Israel. They had a similar uh, committee again within NATO uh, with Egypt and Israel. So, uh, it gets more and more complex for. Um, uh, the situation in Greece right now, and um, the the problem, um, what we can really say, and the problem will be is for the people, uh, because whatever happens um, is is going to fire against the people, uh, because all of these exercises in the Aegean, all of these um, uh, privatizations that are happening. Uh, are not given away for free. They are not happening with uh, uh, pro-people um, intentions. So, of course, there are uh, foreign capitals interests in Greece, as they are uh, everywhere. Especially when you are part of a of a of a union like uh, Europe, like NATO, uh, etc. Uh, but 
local ones are still, of course, um, uh, hanging in there. And uh, it's not uh, that long ago that uh, Greek capital was uh, dominant in uh, the Balkans area, especially. It still is in some countries. Um, so you see there is a lot of contradiction and there are many big um, um, uh, companies nowadays that they are leaving Greece and they are going to markets that have a more cheaper labor force like uh, Bulgaria or Romania uh, for example and they are Greek capital in the name at least of it. Ray and first it's not a question, it's just like making me a contribution. That's the reason I came along tonight, because I think there are certain similarities between what's happening in Greece and Spain and also in Scotland. And as communists, we look at the conditions in other countries to try and draw lessons for our, our own struggles. And six months ago, a lot of people on the left in Scotland put a lot of faith in movements like Syriza and Podemos. Mm. And six months later, there we are, Syriza's crashing out and Podemos has fallen apart. And the same forces in Scotland put a lot of faith in a resurgent nationalist movement. And I can remember during the referendum campaign, John phoning me and asking me what was happening in Dundee on the referendum mm. campaign. Mm. And I says, well, for once, John, bear me the status quo and there's no much of a movement. How wrong could you be? But I think our definition of a movement is something different from what is happening. You can get a movement of substance and you get a movement that's based on candy floss. And I really think that the movements in Greece giving support to Syriza, as those in Spain giving support to Podemos, and the movement here giving support to the SNP are built on candy floss. They've got no philosophical or economic basis whatsoever. And you look at that and the, you sway between being angry and being sorrowful. Sorrowful because millions of people are going to be disappointed and their lives are being affected horribly, particularly in your country. And anger that charlatans and opportunists can switch the, 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 the goalposts, move the political position, kid people on just to arrive back at where they were when the book was really being put into them. And I was really taken by how you described Syriza's programme. They haven't changed anything. What they've done is maybe said, we'll mitigate the worst effects of the economic crisis, but we'll go no further. And they've been told they're not going to get to go any further by Merkel and the Troika and all the rest. That's obvious. And what I'd like a discussion around is that these events are not taking place in a vacuum. There is the ongoing general crisis of capitalism, which is still raging out there. It's not been resolved. Not only in the Eurozone, but also in the wider capitalist world. We've got fall, a fallen uh, output recently in this country and also in America. There's a fallen output, I believe, in China. So the demand's not going to be there for any real recovery. So capitalism international capitalism, and within that, the European Union, have got major difficulties, major economic and political problems are facing them. And I really get back down to the same question. The working class have got to be uh, taken away from the anti-communism that have been, they've been fed for the last 30 or 40 years. They've got to be weaned off anti-communism. Because there's without any shadow of a doubt, the only solution to the problems that millions of working people are facing today in a capitalist world can only be resolved by public ownership and the means of production, distribution and exchange. And that's one of the reasons that the British Communist Party has a position of withdrawal from the European Union, because we want to win some control by generating uh, an enhanced economic and industrial democracy, which isn't possible within the European Union. So I was a bit surprised that you're saying the position of the KKE is that capitalism's capitalism, whether it's in the European Union or no. Personally, I thought the KKE had a position the same as the CPB.
to withdraw from the European Union. Good, that's uh, kind of a question at the end of it, <laughs> but I think a very useful contribution indeed. Who else wants to come in with either a question or a discussion point? Yep, Josh, and I'll come in with um, one, I think. I think there is, there's an interesting um, contradiction in what Ray's saying. Um, if we look at, um, pe I think people put faith in trying to make change. They may not know how to do that. And if there's a movement, then we have to intervene in the movement and try to infuse it with politics that do say that, you know, at the end of the day, we have to smash capitalism in order to bring about a better society. But in the interim, we can't hold our breath. We need reforms that deliver for the working class. And I think that's the attraction to social democracy. That's the kind of limitation of a lot of people's perspective. And I think that's part of the reason why it was Syriza rather than the KKE, because we have to deliver reforms in the, in the interim, in the process of trying to make a revolution and bring about you know, workers' control of society and uh, workers' ownership of the means of production. In Scotland, that faith landed in a nationalistic direction. It didn't uh, succeed in making um, a split from the rest of the UK. But I think that has made a huge uh, rise in the level of politics. And people who are engaging in politics in Scotland, the, the parallel with Greece is that the Labour Party is about to lose the majority of its seats in Scotland to the SNP off the back of the referendum campaign, which didn't win. So that movement continues to go in some sort of direction. Um, you know, we can debate whether or not that's positive or not. Um, but the, the movement does have a significance, and we do have to grapple with the power of organized people in movements to change governments. Um, and we have to try and infuse that with, with some politics that bring about at least some positive reforms for working class people. So I, d I don't think that I would say that the, the movement was based on candy floss. I think it's based on an aspiration <coughs> for doing better than the horrific conditions that we've been subjected to for so long. I think that's the parallel in Greece and in Britain, especially in Scotland. Um, and we have to be able to engage with that and make arguments. Okay, uh, that's two points. I've maybe come in myself. One is to ask just how far that massive privatization program that was enforced on Greece uh, by the EU has been carried out. But, link that to a, a point that you made earlier about how far when Syriza came in the actual scale of the movement of resistance on the ground in terms of marches and activity became less uh, which I think is the key point at the moment insofar as you've got massive changes in ownership you've got attacks on public ownership how far is the beginning to be a bigger base of resistance. Are any of these privatizations or selling off being resisted on the ground? Mm. And how far is a new working class movement, in a sense, being built from the base in terms of active resistance to um, what is happening uh, in terms of uh, both the attacks of the EU uh, and also the kind of joint attack of capital? Because um, that is really the test of how things are changing yet, so mm -hmm. far anyway, or not changing. So that's three more questions. Uh, we're moving towards eight o'clock, we've got about another quarter of an hour, mm. so if you want to if you not <laughs> I <those>. promise <laughs> now, I promise. Um, um, just very quickly to say, uh, of course uh, KKA supports that we need to withdraw from EU, but in another economy. So, because uh, there are a lot of, um, uh, they want to call left themselves, forces in Greece that they say, yes, yes, withdraw from the EU, now is the time, nah, nah, nah. but we stay in capitalism. So we just have other capitalists on top of our heads. Um, 
and at the same time that creates the illusions uh, that uh, as you've mentioned that is troika or somebody else that says what to do it's not come on uh, if if it was that the case then actually they wouldn't agree on the 70 percent of the new memorandum that is building and they wouldn't negotiate only the 30 percent they wouldn't agree all these measures and they wouldn't even on the negotiations the negotiations wouldn't be all these anti-people um, things uh, that, um, like, for example, uh, cutting more um, uh, the the pensions and uh, increasing more the the um, the age the retirement ages and other. Um, just a comment on the movement of the support in Syriza. Yes, there was actually a, a quite one uh, even here uh, in UK. Um, they basically tried, uh, and this is a this is the part where Syriza tries to keep their left profile. So they do what the bourgeois party would do, actually, but at the same time they're trying to keep their left profile. So they are creating demonstrations like that, which are, were organized massively by them. Okay, do not fool that it was from people that they didn't know where they were going to. Yes, it did attract a lot of. Um, people that uh, were supporting Syriza, not members of course, but it was organized by them, it wasn't organized spontaneously. Um, and it, it, uh, they were trying to create the illusion that this government um, is, a, is a government uh, for the whole of Greece, that Greece is not divided into classes, that there is no benefit of the bourgeois class and not benefit for the working class, everybody is together in a nice family. No. Of course, it's not like that the case. So they were trying to create the illusion that uh, things can change, and we can see that um, uh, even for example, for the salary that uh, the, the increase of the minimum salary, the minimum wage, that was uh, the the flag of their uh, uh, election um, of the electionary campaign. Uh, they said afterwards that, um, yeah, okay, this probably will happen at the end of 2015, maybe end of 2016, and only if we agree with um, uh, the Troika, sorry, the third institutions now, uh, and uh, with uh, the employers. So, come on, who in, which employer will say, yes, we are going to increase your salary? And even if they agree, under which condition? What does it mean, for example, for the people that are taking a, a, a higher salary right now? Because there are still, for example, jobs that they are getting paid better. They have a, a collective agreement that still in place, some in some cases, um, that actually says that this is the level, and it's quite high than the average uh, salary. So what are you going to do? Are you going to bring them down? So, again, um, it, the, just a comment on the situation in Europe. I didn't mention a lot about it. Obviously, um, as John said, in, in Europe there were, um, uh, you could see it before, but now it's more obvious, there are, in a way, losers and winners from the crisis. You have uh, winners like basically Germany, uh, which benefited in a way from the crisis, not because it just happened to be in advance, because all these anti-people's laws were passed in Germany before the crisis hit, so they were prepared. And then you have losers, like, in a way, like Greece, Italy, France, and what is happening right now in Europe is they're trying, in a way, um, to alter the, the management that is happening. So countries like Greece uh, are trying to push for a more expand, expandive, um, expandive uh, policy. Uh, so more relax on the um, uh, uh, currency policy, on the um, on uh, on the whole. Um, I don't know the English way to say that. Uh, on the on the more financial situation, more relaxed anyway. Um, so more on the investment rather than, than cutting. Uh, while you have uh, cases like Germany would say, come on, we, we already done that, why do we need to pay for this? Um, and of course on this uh, correlation 
Um, other forces are playing part, like Russia, uh, like uh, US, etc. So that's why you have even part uh, parts of the same bourgeoisie class in a country saying no. For example, we need to go out of the EU. Like for example, like in uh, Britain, uh, UKIP says no. But why why do they say no to the EU? They don't say no to the EU because. Uh, they know that this is not a pro-people uh, union and they want a pro-people union. They want because they have other interests, maybe with Russia, maybe with America. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but it's the same situation in Greece. So the, you have parts of the bourgeoisie class defending different interests. And regarding... Um, so at this level, when you have... Um, <coughs> a, you cannot have a, um, a part of um, you cannot have reforms or let's say we won't they won't be allowed reforms uh, for poor, for people in the benefit for people um, and I can give you a lot of examples that KK tried to push on the parliament so we had draft laws on uh, uh, the support of the unemployment. Uh, we had uh, unemployed. We had different, um, a few uh, laws uh, for the increasing, um, uh, sorry, for the health um, uh, situation. Uh, we had a proposal on the um, uh, on the reinstating of the 13th and the 14th uh, salary and the 13th and 14th uh, pension. Uh, we had the last one, which was to abolish all the, all the all the memorandum laws and all the laws that happened, which were over 300. So there were a lot of things that we were trying to do. But obviously, you have a bourgeoisie um, a parliament. They won't accept. They won't go and do that. They are supporting uh, capital. They are supporting um, and companies and enterprises. They won't go through this. But... Um, so what can you do actually in capitalism? You cannot go obviously through the parliament. You're trying. You're part of that because you get informed. You can show to the people, look how they are reacting, etc. But at the same time, you need to try. Uh, you need to try and help the people, not to think that through the parliament they can have a solution, but showing them what is the actual issue, what is the reason that you are in this situation. Because otherwise they will believe that through a different management, through a different, maybe if you do this, if you um, try and behave differently, if you put another law, maybe it will be better for them. It cannot change in capitalism, especially right now that it gets worse and worse, that they cannot get the surplus value that they used to get. Uh, so you need to have more and more um, uh, cheaper labor. Um, so, yes, we do all these draft laws, but at the same time, we we let them know what is that, what is the reason of their situation, what is the solution, what should be uh, the movement today, how things can actually radically change. Uh, so, for example, uh, just to answer uh, John's uh, point as well. Um, we have the, the People's Alliance that we're trying to create. Uh, we have action committees in neighborhoods, in working places. They are not uh, obviously trade unions, PAME, which is a federation. Um, uh, and all these, especially the action committees, uh, is something very new to us. It's only five years, six years. Um, uh, which are people that are trying to, um, they are gathering in neighborhoods, for example, where you have someone's power, electricity, cut off, and they go and, uh, and, and don't allow that to happen, or they uh, reconnect the power. But the, so this is something that, yes, you can action today, but at the same time, you need to tell them that this is only a symbolic action. You cannot obviously go and do that everywhere. But at the same time, you need... Uh, you uh, to take part on this, you need to act on this, you need to um, participate and you need to understand that by doing that every time is not going to solve the problem. Um, so, uh, 
uh, so you are trying to create this kind of alliances or for example with uh, uh, the small um, uh, owners like small stores uh, where they see their um, uh, um, their income shrinking or that they are being taken over by big uh, companies um, regarding the privatization in Greece, uh, as I've mentioned before, Syriza before the election was saying that uh, we are going to um, uh, open again all the cases that were pr privatized before, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the only thing that they did was basically to accept all the privatizations that happened. And on the contests uh, that were still open, so they haven't finalized before the, um, they were elected, uh, what they did was to change a little bit the terms. So they were speaking now, for example, about the port in Piraeus, and uh, not uh, uh, the, the private company to have, for example, 67%, uh, but to have only 58 yeah, okay, so it's not that, it's this. It's like very small uh, uh, differences, but uh, the, um, the essence is still the same. They accept privatization. Or, the, for example, they were calling it not privatization, but um, a, a, a coalition or a cooperation between public and private sector. Yeah, we're playing with words now. Um, so basically that's the case. But um, there are, for example, um, uh, several unions, especially in Piraeus Port, uh, that they are reacting on that. And they are very uh, class-oriented. Um, but still, I mean, if you, you need to have the whole, um, you need to have reactions from the whole working class, so from other unions, the support, um, or from uh, uh, women's organizations or um, uh, other kind of committees or um, trade unions. Okay. The time is almost exactly 8 o'clock. I know you've got to get a plane fairly soon. I don't know whether there's... I think we probably ought to um, wind up. We could have gone on, I think, for a long time mm. uh, having discussion. Uh, but you might want to make some final points before you before you go back to London. Yeah, no, I mean, if uh, I, I would uh, love to sit and discuss, I mean, I, I hope I try to highlight a few points here and there. I know, of course, in two hours almost, you cannot answer everything and uh, solve every matter, every question. Um, I think the, the most important is to keep that the situation, uh, not only in Greece, but uh, across Europe, is quite um, uh, fluid. Uh, things can change uh, very quickly and not for the best of the people. That's something that we can all see. Um, the situation, especially um, in the Middle East and uh, in Ukraine, and with uh, the whole uh, uh, Russia in the beginning of, uh, in the end of last year, you can see that there are a lot of uh, conflicts, uh, and this will happen more and more as they try to uh, get more profits. At the same time, you have all this capital that is not invested, so um, uh, it's sitting somewhere, but is not invested, so they're having more and more problem on the turn uh, over. Um, that's why, actually, in Greece, right now, they are not asking just... Um, they, they are creating, let's say, with all these uh, laws, a more attractive uh, place uh, for investors to come. Um, and when we say attractive place, we mean making people cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Uh, or slashing any benefits they're having, any health insurance, etc. For example, uh, education in Greece is still uh, f free in um, universities, etc. Uh, but right now, this is what they're trying to put by saying we want to manage the universities better, which means someone needs to pay for that management. How they're going to do that? Uh, things like that. Um, 
so um, yeah, I think it's um, it's quite important as well to to, to remember that um, every each of us is part of um, a, let's say um, a team in a, even if it's in their work environment, even if they it's in their neighborhood where we can actually influence, where we can explain what is the situation, what is happening in Britain, especially today, um, uh, what is the strategy that is followed, um, and what should be actually the interest of the people nowadays. Uh, what is the only solution, how we can change uh, the situation, how they can take part of that, because I think this is the the most difficult um, thing to to people believe in their power and they uh, actually act. Uh, uh. Thanks very much. Well, I think it was just to conclude. I think it was really excellent that you were here. You briefed us on the details of the Greek situation, because we don't often get to hear it firsthand. And many of the basic issues that you're talking about apply to us too. It is about how to develop the struggle on the ground in the workplaces that goes beyond uh, simply reacting to events, but mm -hmm. is about the issue of who controls. So thanks very much for coming up. And Thank you as You've well. now got to get a very fast <laughs> run down <laughs> to the airport, I think. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.